What is what going on everyone? It is foul play here. Back for match number three of this modern league. Lost to Dyroll versus Murrayfish. Hand is good though, so we will keep. Definitely like having our business aura, like Thurial armor here. And uh, Vigilance, Totem armor, not too shabby either. Decent clock with the hand. We'll see what we're versing. Control. Looks to be a control deck. This is the sort of hand that's like pretty punishing against a control deck. Um, but also my opponent had the play. Uh, it does apply a good amount of pressure with all these one mana auras though, which is something I do look for in the control matchups. Spider Umbra. That's it. Do you want to counter opponent? No? Alright, well, we'll run out the Sentinel's eyes then. If you want to counter this one, it comes back at some point. Not yet. We don't have two cards in the graveyard yet. But this one will come back. Mug my words. <laughs> Even if we're losing hardcore and I have to enchant it on my opponent's creature, I'll bring this son of a bitch back. <laughs> All right, the force of negation pitching uh, cryptic command. Is he gonna snap cast a chump block here? It's like just terrible value for my opponent if that's his line. Um, obviously three cards in hand. He'll go down to two if this is a snap cast a mage block. Sure, I'm like okay with this. This is fine. Uh, opponent is shooting themselves in the foot here, one hundred percent. So now we're at like Archmage's Charm Mana. We go for the Spirit Mantle. We'll see what the opponent's response is, and then we'll look to resolve Ethereal Armor. Next turn, Daybreak Coronet will be fantastic too. Cool. In for four. All right, so like all that accomplished nothing. My opponent has three lands and two cards in hand. Didn't even Archmage's Charm. So they could have a Cryptic Command here. I think I'm going to respect Cryptic Man and just go for the attack first. Let's, let's like do something really tricky. I'm going to really go for selling that we have absolutely nothing in hand here. And we'll see what he does. Still no... Aha! We got him. We got him, guys. We got him, YouTube. All right. Did I say I was going to be tricky and try to uh, next level my opponent there or what? We did it. Mm-hmm. That clock's looking a bit menacing now, isn't it? Not too shabby, Bogle player. Opponent concedes. All right, well, this was just like playing way too aggressive into us for no reason. There's literally no reason to be doing that stupid shit against us. I... I, I don't know why these Grix... We've asked two Grixes control players this league. Both of them have made terrible decisions, in my opinion. First one was that Lurus player, and now this. Like, no. Nah. All right, so bring in these Leyline of Sanctities. We'll take out our Path to Exiles. Probably take out a Griff Spoon as well. Yeah, should be pretty good from there. I did just double check and my opponent actually exiled, yeah, Cryptic Command off of that first Force of Negation on, on like turn two. So that was a little bit absurd in my opinion. All right, we'll keep this one. A little bit like action light, but whatever. Probably just throw one hexproof guy. Opponent miles to five. Almost feels like they're putting themselves under pressure this matchup, but I mean, we'll take it. We like, we are so like underpowered against so much of modern these days, so much card quality and things like that. If our opponents want to play bad and give us win percentage, I'll 100% take it. 
Of course, he could have just, like, bad hands as well. Actually, I think I misplayed there, like... Opponent was on... is on Grixis, right? And they could have turned one Thought Seized, and we had the option to have two Hexproof creatures in hand there, and I bottomed one. Probably we bottomed the Daybreak Coronet in that spot and keep double Hexproof Spider Umbra Core. Double land. So yeah, my bad. That was... that was a mistake. Me, um... boasting and things like that. Turns out it didn't matter, didn't get punished, uh, but just so you all know, that's the correct play. Tassiga, sure. Tassiga leaving up Bolt Manor. I kind of don't like using both my Umbros on my Bogle here, but I also feel like we have to. Find it Thought Scours. Us? What? That's that's gotta mean he's got counter squall in hand right now. So that's important information to deduce. Uh we can't attack into Tassiga. Turn two Tassiga at that, that's pretty huge. Alright, so if opponent's got, you know, Drown in the Lock, we're gonna do our best to bait it out. Hopefully we draw a one mana aura so we can, like, Spirit Dancer aura. Mm, we can't. Uh, let's go for attacks. Let's play this patient. We can play, like, two two mana spells next turn. Um... So I think we play this patient here. Task is a cool card. Um, I'm not sure it's better than Gurmorgangler. Like, back when Grixis Shadow used to be a thing, the decks would play, um like two copies of Tassiga, two copies of Gurmag. And then like Gurmag was so good and it ended up being, um, Two copy, uh, three copies of Gurmog, one copy of Tassiga, and then they just cut Tassiga all together. Alright, you wanna answer that opponent? You're welcome to answer this. It's all yours. Right here, I'm dangling it on a string in front of you. Cool. Alright, so either way we get the card draw here. This probably gets countered, um, but at least we draw a card. Opponent did miss a land drop as well. Does mean the four cards in his hand are live though. Uh, the spell snare, not bad. Uh, we hit another land. Not really what we're looking for. Get in there for three. Not really winning this race just yet. Spell Snare. Who plays Spell Snare these days? <laughs> decks like... The, the format's running around with all these prowess decks that have got like... Freaking all the one mana cantrip burn spells and you think Spell Snare's a good option. Like it's so good if it's in your hand and you get that like... A Sprite Dragon but like all the mana morphos but... If you draw it, it does nothing, man. There's got to be a better option. I don't. I don't think that's the best place at the moment. But I don't just snap cast a mages for beats. Seems odd. What does that tell us? Like, obviously, he's got a good clock with six power on the board. We can't really block. 
Discard land here. Uh, Leyline sort of does something. We might actually need to go on blocking JD for next turn. Taking six damage here. Like, we're okay if we draw Daybreak Coronet or um, Sentinel's Eyes. They really help us. But yeah, Daybreak is the number one chase aura at the moment. Won't complain. Alright, we're on blocking duty though. Just like a turn earlier instead of the ley line would have been nice because then I could have um, ethereal'd into Daybreak. Or Spirit Dancer into ethereal. Um... Maybe draw another one drop sort of thing. So there, discarding the Temple Garden is better because Leyline might stop future discard spells. Like Colligan's Command in our upkeep. Um, fuck off you have that in hand. Oh my god. So he actually drew land for turn, so he's been holding this a while. That is a juicy, juicy explosives. I hate this card so much. It's it's so good against our deck. I had no way to play around it there either. Um, opponents like only discard that game was Culligan's Command. Is Leyline even worth it? Do we prefer Path for Tassiga? Uh, like flying could be good as well. We can even cheese them with suppression fields here. Suppression field's good against explosives too. Uh, I think we just removed the spirit mantles. I'm gonna bring back in the paths and the suppression fields. Uh, actually, gonna have two path and one spirit mantle. Try and keep up with that, people. My brain's bouncing all over the place there. Um, so yeah, reminder, guys, if you haven't done so already, do enjoy the content. Uh, please consider please consider subscribing. Uh, daily bogle content here, all that fun stuff people love. Oh, uh, we're gonna keep this one. Might. Is it weird that I want Suppression Field? Opponent keeps their 7. Stitch Daybreak. Probably seems super odd, but uh, we're gonna do it. Alright, so we're not playing like a one mana spell into spell snare here. Fortunately, hey, this is pretty good. We get to play around um, engineered explosives a little bit. We had the Hyena Umbra and the Rancor in hand. Opponent thought scours us. Seems so odd. I guess he's just not got a Tastiga hand, so he's valuing the Drown and the Lock interaction. Still seems very odd though, in a deck with Snap Custom Mage to not fill up your own graveyard. So what I want here is a land, so I can bait the uh, counter spell with the Gris Spoon and then Suppression Field afterwards. That or maybe like he taps out for something and then we're happy. All right, no tap a doodle. Uh, I should hold on to that land until after I cast the spell. That's a mistake. He's still considering countering it though. Okay, sweet. All right, suppression field, get down, do your thing, mess the opponent up. So this suppression field could have been a spirit mantle or a path. See how good suppression field is. Castle Vantress, so far not the best. Spider Umbra. Opponent hard counters with Archmage's Charm. Okay, sure. So we've got them on a three turn clock here. 
Our own Horizon Canopy will cost extra to activate here as well, so we can't really consider doing that in this spot. Come on, fetch land. Give us some value. Oh my god, man. Three color deck just avoiding playing any fetch land. Damnation, trigger. Alright, what can we find? Amazing. Uh, the way they did that makes it feel like they have another wrath effect of some descriptions. So I'm just going to attack for three here. Hold up my bogle for my turn. So if he like taps out for an engineered explosives or something, then we'll be okay. Seems like very odd that they haven't had a single fetch land this game. Sunken ruins as well. Uh, are they honestly just playing around the explosives and shutting themselves off red? Or like, what are they doing? All right, well, there's a good chance our opponent has Snapcaster Mage here into like Chump Block. Or just like Cryptic Tap Down. The only bad thing here is if he casts Drown in the Lock off of the Snapcaster Mage. That's where things go like really bad for us. We want him to target Thought Scour here. Actually, he can target Archmage's Charm. And then we're just screwed either way. We have to slow roll this Bogle now. Wow, he goes for Thought Scour. No way, man. No way. Camera. Camera. <laughs> He's targeting me again. What is he doing? He knows I have cards that come out of my graveyard as well. Has he got surgical extraction? He's looking to take all my rancors. All right, guy resolves. Pressure straight back on the opponent. You know, first strike would be a thing. <laughs> Just gonna put that one out there. Maybe another hyena umbra is what the doctor ordered. Um, Ronan's deck has been completely and utterly different to their deck in games one or two as well, though. Like, not a single fetch land. Suppression Field should be doing something here, and it's not. In that spot, Path might have been better, actually. Um, maybe he's got the explosives in hand and he just, like, slow rolled it or something, but... Right, so he did that for Into the Story to draw four cards during his turn. Right. Why? Ah, Tastigat makes a little bit of sense, I suppose. Still no fetch lands. Did they even mill any? No, not a single fetch land. Okay, well, that's fine. Oh, good top deck. A really good top deck. They could force a negation this. Oh my god. Wow. That was that was a close one. Uh, we're, like, pretty fortunate there. I, I still feel like we're unfortunate on the, um, suppression field. But then we're, like, really fortunate on that path as well. So maybe it, like, balances out or something. 
Uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching right up until the end, though. Um, really appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Cheers.